Welcome back to Evolutionary Psychology. Now, let's explore the fascinating role that sexual selection plays in evolution and evolutionary psychology. Natural selection has become well accepted as the main mechanism of evolutionary change. Despite this acceptance, it is clear that it fails to explain why males and females of many species differ so much. In this chapter, we consider the way that the behavior of each sex might affect the behavior of the other. This is the concept of sexual selection. We also consider why sex itself exists as a means of reproduction when so many species are able to do without it. Finally, we look at some examples from the animal kingdom and how the behavior of each sex may be affected by sexual selection. During the writing of The Origin of Species, Darwin realized that many animals had both physical and behavioral features, which are very difficult to explain in terms of natural selection. Because they face the same ecological pressures, natural selection should drive the characteristics of males and females of a species in the same direction. And yet, in many vertebrate species, males are larger and more gaudy than their female counterparts. Furthermore, Males generally engage in a greater degree of risk-taking behavior. The elaborate feathers that make up a peacock's tail make him conspicuous to predators such as foxes and tigers. The piercing calls that he makes to attract females also inform predators of his whereabouts. On his journey, Darwin may have run across birds that might have led him to think about concepts of evolution, paralleling what these researchers are finding now. They swagger and serenade. They dance and display. They've been photographing, analyzing, and recording their every move, every behavior, in an attempt to comprehend their secrets and in doing so, revealing extreme examples of the miracle of evolution. The Birds of Paradise represent one of these singular events of evolution that stand out, that are extraordinary. They're something that's without precedent, something that evolved that's so unique and so exceptional that you're driven to, to say, you know, why? Or, you know, how did, that, how did that happen? How did that come to be? How does it strike you that these exotic forms are all males, while the females are all very plain by comparison? Why is that? Since natural selection was thought to promote anti-predator adaptations, it seems strange that such features should have arisen. In addition to drawing attention from predators, the time and energy that many males spend in making courtship calls might otherwise have been spent on foraging and other beneficial activities such as preening. This means that being attractive to females and spending time attempting to attract them must have real and potential costs. Darwin realized that traits which help males to attract females would increase their chances of mating and thereby of passing on such features. So Darwin argued that features which helped you to breed might paradoxically sometimes be selected for, even up to the point of shortening your life. In 1871, with the publication of The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex, he developed a new selective force, sexual selection. Sexual selection applies to those characteristics that provide individuals with advantages in gaining access to mates. Hence, if natural selection is survival of the fittest, then we can think of sexual selection as survival of the sexiest. Evolutionary psychologists have suggested that this is as true of our species as it is of others. A number of surveys of human mate preference, for example, demonstrate how men from a wide range of cultures find the classic hourglass shape of young women particularly attractive. This makes sense when applying sexual selection theory, since this shape is an indicator of fertility in women. Having introduced sexual selection in The Descent of Man, Darwin went on to outline how this competition for mates might take two different forms. Intrasexual selection consists of individuals competing with members of their own sex for access to the opposite sex. In most cases, this means males fighting with each other for access to females. 
Intrasexual selection is generally regarded as being responsible for males developing weapons to compete with each other, such as large teeth and horns, greater musculature, and a lower threshold for aggression when compared to their female counterparts. Take a look at the intraspecies competition of elephant seal versus elephant seal. Trigger warning here for violence. Also, do you think this goes on in our species in some form in males or females? For a bull elephant seal, bigger is better. The males can grow up to 20 feet long and weigh over 8,000 pounds. But it's that long trunk-like snout that really amps up the sex appeal. The bulls use those massive noses to broadcast one message. This is my turf, and to mate here, you have to get through me. Elephant seals are the sumo wrestlers of the marine world. In a battle, bulk is everything, and champs win it all. Gathering harems of 40 to 50 females. Only one in 10 males will become an alpha male and father pups. If this bachelor wants a sex life, combat is his only answer. So the time has come to start a fight. grows more intense and the battered contenders take their fight to the water. Challenger gets a good thrashing. And the big alpha returns to his ladies for his prize. Multiple matings. Intersexual selection consists of members of one sex attempting to impress members of the other. In this case, the emphasis is on females, since they are generally the ones that need to be impressed before they will assent to mating. Intersexual selection is believed to lead to the evolution of sexual ornamentation, such as brighter plumage and courtship display in males in order to impress females. For example, observe the greater bird of paradise in its phases of courtship. This is the communal display lack in, a, in the canopy of these two male greater birds of paradise. We had a great opportunity here to film all the phases of courtship, from calling to attract females all the way through to copulation. Notice how that female is coming into the frame there and it sends the males into this kind of round of excited galloping. So they go down one way and they kind of bounce back up and they pause and they ruffle and shake their feathers. They look like they're, they're cooperating, and they are displaying in a synchronous way, but really they're in competition. Both want to be the one that mates. And then eventually, after several rounds of that, they'll turn head down, holding themselves still so the females can see their vibrant yellow on the underside of their flank plumes. And when the females are interested in, in mating, they get in really close and inspect the males. And he starts doing a, a wing flapping that's more exaggerated. And he goes into this backwards dance, back and forth, kind of hopping, doing this unusual thing. 
At this point, the female is actually allowing the male to make contact with her, albeit from his compromised head-down position. When he spins around then, and this is the pre-mating display, the male moves in and starts clapping her with his wings, giving this strange vocalization. There's a lot of components of the display that, that do seem a bit aggressive. If I don't know that it's he's, he's hurting the female in any way, but he is definitely clapping her um, with his wings, and he's simulating pecking at the back of her, her head and nape, even though he's not really pecking at it. The male will keep doing this for a while, and if the female is ready to mate, notice how she's kind of fluttering out her wings a little bit. That's the signal that she's ready to mate, and uh, this guy is successful. Good morning to be a great bird of paradise. For their part, Darwin predicted that females should be choosy about which males they accept as mating partners, perhaps discriminating on the basis of male ornamentation and display. For most species, we equate intrasexual selection with male-male competition and intersexual selection with female choice. Sexual selection did not receive strong support during Darwin's day, even from those within the biological sciences. While there was some acceptance that males might develop weapons, such as tusks, to compete with each other over females, many experts were distinctly skeptical about the idea of female choice. Given that females are smaller and less aggressive than males in most species, surely they were unlikely to have much choice when it came to sexual matters. In addition to this practical argument, there were more serious theoretical concerns. In particular, Darwin was unable to explain why female preference should even arise. Although it might be argued that males which were successful in using such features to attract females would pass on such characteristics to their offspring, this still raised the question, what was in it for the females? Why should they choose gaudy males who would surely attract greater attention from predators? During the 20th century, a number of theories were advanced which attempted to answer these questions. Exploring these theories can help understand why sexual selection has great importance to the understanding of the relationship between evolution and behavior.